The atoll's minister delivers the news these people don't want to hear. Plenty must have now, because situation come up in this. So moving holy meeting. Only a fraction of the population has turned out to listen to Tehu Pass's prediction that by 2015 the Carterets will be underwater. Program will move. It must move. Usati like stop. You stop. That's all. Program. The majority of the population of the island now are willing to move, especially when they experience the the sort of situation they face on the island. These people are about to become environmental refugees. The plan is to shift ten families at a time to a new life in Bougainville, offering them small plots of land that they can cultivate. It's not quite their home, though, is it? It won't be not quite their home, but uh, it will be a new place that uh, they will have to accept. The tribal chiefs of the Carterets are facing the most momentous decision of their lives. They've gathered to talk about the evacuation of their ancestral home. You know Poret, uh, Longstop Island? Me know Poret. Suppose island is illus, me do me illus. Me illus want in my land. For this elder, the decision not to go will split his family. Morris Rubin's son, Andreas, is the young leader who'll supervise the relocation. Well, me feel him uh, so really click because me no like go out without my father. Why me force him long? Why me play my Why me look out him long? The Big Island, as they call it, is only 100 kilometres away, but it's a world away from the peace and quiet of the Carterets. A bitter civil war over mining and money claimed 10,000 lives. And while it's quieter now, law and order is still a problem in the new autonomous region of Bougainville. I was used to an island life all of a sudden I was thrown into um, having to adjust to living on mainland. When they are hungry, they... Ursula Rakova left the Carterets for the Big Smoke several years ago and now has the job of coordinating the move of her fellow islanders. If I had a miracle to perform, I wouldn't bring my people here. Law and order is, is a big concern to us, um, especially when we are coming from a a peaceful community and coming into an area that um, we have not lived before. So law and order is a, a big concern to us. The islands are being squeezed not only by the oceans, but by the people who live here. There are too many islanders to be sustained by its diminishing gardens. The relocation will thin the population before this place becomes completely uninhabitable in the next decade. There will still be people here on the island until the last tree from the island is down. The only time to evacuate everybody will be when the last tree goes down, meaning total was down and only the reef remains. You'd think with what's happening here, this place would be swarming with scientists and experts. But the people will tell you they've never ever had a visit from a study team from anywhere in the world. For all the questions here, there are no answers. Without exception, the people here blame global warming, especially those hardest hit on the tiny island of Puel. For the last 10 years, we haven't planted anything 
in this area because Chief of the Bernard Turnham takes me through like gardens it. ruined yeah. by seawater. Pure salt water is bubbling from underneath and it has spoiled the, uh, the area which we've been planting swamp taro and other crops. Here at high tide, the water doesn't just breach the sea walls, it seeps up from beneath the ground. The pools left behind are a haven for malaria-carrying mosquitoes. We get malaria and many of our children are affected by malaria and so this diarrhea and other tummy aches and headache, all this comes up because of stagnant water. There is no electricity here, let alone television or the internet. But as isolated as these people are from the industrialised world, they know enough about its excesses. The melting of the ice and the rise of the sea level, that's why the island maybe in a few years time will be covered with salt water or maybe submerged by the sea. For the second time in as many weeks, another shipment of rice arrives. The islanders can hardly believe it, but they know the ship will not return for many months. There are no regular aid drops by a financially stricken Bougainville government, and these people are completely ignored by international aid agencies. They feel a forgotten people. really miss the place. I miss the sea, the fish and the coconuts, the palm trees. It is a home to me. I do belong to the island. I feel sort of an island. If sea levels rise as they have done over recent decades, the Carteret Islands will become the first inhabited atoll to be swallowed by the ocean. For many, it's too late to worry about how or why this is happening. The islanders know this is unstoppable, whatever the force that's dragging them into the sea. <laughs> 